Hi, this is Brandy, the founder and owner of Modern House Numbers. Welcome to Adventures in Curb Appeal, a podcast that celebrates the best of modern design and it introduces you to talented architects and designers to inspire you to enhance your exterior and boost your curb appeal. My guest today, Karen Nethesina, is the author of a new book, Mid-Century Modern Style, An Approachable Guide to Inspired Rooms. Mid-Century Modern Homes, Furnishings, and Accessories are in high demand across the country. Karen is one of the leading authorities of Mid-Century Modern Design and the founder and principal of her design firm, Desolation Eichler. She is an entrepreneur and interior designer dedicated to renovating mid-century homes. I've been a big fan of Karen's for a long time. I was first introduced to her in 2013 during the renovation and transformation of her own Eichler home. Recently, I got to speak with her at, about her new book. I was so inspired that I wanted to invite her to speak with you today so you can learn how to apply her great ideas to your own home. Let's meet Karen. Hi, Karen. I want to congratulate you on your new book. I'm excited to introduce you to our listeners, so many whom are design lovers looking to add a little mid-century modern flair to their own homes and spaces. Before we jump into the book, which is amazing, I'd love to chat a little bit more about how you got started in modern design and mid-century modern architecture and interiors. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. And I think you and I have known each other now for a few years. So um, this is great to be able to talk a little bit more. We first started working with Modern House Numbers because I actually bought our number set for our house when we first bought the house. We hadn't even, we didn't even have like a plan on a renovation. Um, so I think I, we got the Palm Springs font on your numbers in the six inch and I just knew someday I would put them on my house and it'd be like a really happy day. We live in an Eichler home in uh, Walnut Creek, California. So embarking on restoring our house is really how we discovered the love for mid-century modern design. Um, and it's really, it just started as like a personal project and passion to restore our house. And then over the years it, we've built, um, you know, I've been able to turn my passion and, and side projects into an actual full-fledged uh, design firm. Absolutely. It's so fun to see someone turn their passion or something they're really interested in into their career. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's actually quite, it feels so personal. You know, I really, I help people in their homes um, with their families. And I have the pleasure of working with several clients that um, I'm with them through a lot of different transitions in their life. That's great. That's very exciting. I wanted to ask you one other question before we move on. I know that when you renovated your own Eichler home back in 2015 and 16, it you know kickstarted the process of the launch of your blog, Destination Eichler, where you documented your whole journey of the renovation of your home and ultimately transformed it, your, your life, as you spoke about, into a career change. Can you share a little bit more about what motivated you to take the renovation and blogging process and turn it into a career? So we started to connect with other people um, on our blog. Um, for us, it was more like we were just trying to share our challenges and just put it out there. And then when we would find a solution to something we didn't know how to do, we would document it. We started to have a, a great little following of other like-minded homeowners. Mm -hmm. And um, one day I got a great email from um, another Eichler homeowner in, in the town next next door to us and she she said I've been following you and your husband and um I'd like you to help us with our house and I wrote her back right away and said well I don't really do this as a job job but if you'd like some help you know why don't I come by and let's let's um see what you need they wanted to restore a lot of their house it was fairly original I took them on as my first uh clients and I, I was honest and said I don't I don't really do this full time, but uh, we can meet at night and on the weekends and um, let's let's work together. So uh, they put their trust in me and I'm always always be thankful to them because they were my first, you know, mid-century modern design clients. It's been quite a journey. It's it's never, as you know, as a business owner, it's 
definitely not easy. Um, but I think if you really love it and you you really believe in what you're doing and and um, who you're working with, it it's just part of you know. I, I kind of wouldn't have it any other way. It's inspiring. I think it's inspiring to young people out there that are designers that want to be entrepreneurs that, you know, it, it, you know, sometimes it just organically happens and, you know, roll with, uh, roll with your passion and, and hopefully you can turn it into something that you love to do every day. I loved reading your blog because I could absolutely relate to what we are going through with your renovation. Rick and I also purchased and renovated a mid-century modern home about 11 years ago. And I remember looking at pictures of your home and seeing the transformation that you made. And it's quite remarkable from the exterior curb appeal to the interior and your kitchen is unnoticeable from the original purchase to what it is today. So I want to commend you for that. Thank you. I <laughs> yes. I understand that when you bought your home and you dressed it up, as we were talking about for our readers, it had a lot of finishes and details from the 80s and 90s, including some knotty pine, granite, and other things that weren't really modern at all. You and your husband did a lot of research to bring the house back to life in a way that felt as authentic as possible, but also worked for your family, which is really important. What would you say to someone who loves modern style and who has purchased or is going to purchase a mid-century home? What do you do to help see the hidden potential? Yeah, I think you kind of start every property is different on like how much original there is. And um, I fully respect too that like fully original isn't for everybody. Um, you know, some people love to keep the old stove if it works. It's like fantastic. I totally agree. But I also understand, you know, some of these houses were built um, many decades ago and some things just aren't uh, aren't to code anymore, aren't maybe the safest, especially for a family. Um, so really the approach looking at um, a mid-century house, just like, what is there? What, what does make it special? Um, it could be something as simple as the beautiful uh, roof line or mm -hmm. tongue and groove, or maybe like one wall of windows. Um, you know, there's just a lot of neat little characteristics that make a mid-century modern house that architecture and style so i always say what parts do they not really build it like that anymore um you know when you see a new build um tends to be a lot of different kinds of materials than we would have used in the 50s and 60s you know big spans of glass aren't as common it's very expensive to do um so you know what makes what makes it special even if it's um you know i have this uh, affinity for fireplaces and fireplace <laughs> design because i feel like we rarely see um, new fireplaces built in the kind of structure and material that they were back then. So sometimes it's, it's something like, let's keep the fireplace. Um, but I understand your need to kind of update and change other things. But like, let's keep one or two key features. Um, because that's what I, to me, make that house very special. So what can we keep and save? And then what can we, you know, bring in that works much better for you and your family and the way you use your house. So I think you hit it on the head. Absolutely. And that kind of leads me into my next question too. We get this question a lot and I'm wondering if you do too. People will, you know, pe some people love mid-century modern style, but they don't own a mid-century modern home and they really want to add some of those design details and elements to their own home. What advice would you give them? Yeah, there's there's so many fun um, non permanent ways to bring mid century modern style into your house, and I think um, my book touches upon this a lot because mm -hmm. uh, you know not everyone owns a home, or even if you do, maybe you're not ready for like a big a big change. So um, there's kind of a few components that me as a designer use when I'm approaching a project. Um, there's color palettes, there's textures, there's materials. Um, so, you know, what little bits can we bring in? Um, sometimes it could be something as simple as let's bring in, um, let's go shopping and go to an estate sale together or um, mm -hmm. a vintage market and let's buy some fun mid-century modern vintage plates. Um, and okay, then yeah. something you're going to use every day, a little fun. Um, and it kind of sounds silly, like plates and bowls, like how, mm -hmm. you know, that's not nothing really big, but, you know, to to eat 
off of and touch something that has like a little bit of that history and style and flair, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, it really makes for like a, a beautiful setting too on your table. Um, there's a lot of great ways to bring in like more temporary decorative elements. Uh, there's a, been a huge um, influx of great uh, peel and stick wallpaper in terms of curb appeal. You know, of course we love uh, changing out house numbers, lighting, um, even a uh, great little colorful planter. So something you can move with you to your next home. Um, there's, I think actually we're kind of lucky because mid-century modern has become, um, you know, more known, um, a little bit more popular in kind of the general public. So you can actually go to a lot of retailers now and find products that have that mid-century modern, whether, whether it's orange or turquoise, um, or some graphic design built into the product. I feel like maybe now compared to when I started my home journey a few years ago, you can actually like buy, you know, affordable yeah. things like this in mm -hmm. the vein of mid-century modern without, you know, having to go and buy everything original and vintage. And um, it's, it's much more accessible now, it feels like. I absolutely agree. You hit on it a little bit, but my next question was about curb appeal. Can you share three ways that someone could add modern style and curb appeal to their exterior? And again, whether it's a mid-century home or, or not. Yeah, um, I love doing home exteriors, actually. Um, I think color is huge. So the, the choice of your color palette, whether it's um, the actual body of the home color, the door color or any mm -hmm. accent um, trim work. All those little things and and actually even that paint itself is like one thing, but to me it's actually like 10 things because I'm, I'm very particular when I help clients with their exterior. It's not just like the body color. It's like the trim, the fascia, the house. Like if you have concrete, you know, there's so many little details. And I think that's what makes um, exterior paint makeovers such a big change. It's actually the little it's the little details. So I'd say paint um, and color palette would be one, even though it's like quite complex. Um, accessories are fun. So of course, uh, house numbers, the lighting, mailboxes. Um, if you go back, you'd have to go way back on our blog. But our mailbox was very not mid-century modern. It was kind of like pagoda-like um, <laughs> and painted forest green. So I think it would have looked really lovely like in a country house maybe uh -huh. somewhere. Um, and it was like bolted down into our... <laughs> so the day that was removed, it was like, we say this a lot about our home. Every time something that just didn't belong was removed, it like felt better and different. Yeah, exactly. um, and that, you know, again, isn't just for mid-century. It's just, you know, sometimes if there's a thing that just like doesn't quite belong and you remove it, it actually mm -hmm. feels like the space can breathe again. And then, yeah, even as simple as like um, outdoor rugs are a fun, fun way. And you can always change them out, but add some color, add a pattern, um, add a fun saying that makes you or yeah. guests laugh every time you come in. Um, and then, you know, more complex would be landscaping um, here in California. I'm sure in Arizona, too, we're very water wise. So um, trying to put in plants and landscaping that don't require a lot of maintenance and water, um, that tends to go really well with mid-century modern design um, since a lot of great architecture and landscaping derived from places like Palm Springs and Arizona, Southern mm -hmm. California. So again, those things kind of just like work well together. Um, they were naturally designed together um, indoor, outdoor at the time. So I would say those are kind of the key things. And um, even if it's just trying to uh, repaint your door, you know, a lot of, I think a lot of times paint and paint selection like really scares people. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I, what if I hate it? It's like, well, let's repaint it, you know? It's like, give it a try for a little while. So sometimes it could be something as simple as changing out your, your door color and um, it might just completely transform the, the vibe of your house um, by just that one thing.
Absolutely. Our door at our current mid-century modern home is orange. And I literally probably had 30 paint samples to get the mid-century modern color that I wanted. So sometimes these little projects that yes. we think we're just going to do in an hour or two can turn into something bigger. And I think it's it's okay to let our, you know, our, our customers know that that's okay. These things happen. Oh. That's normal. Like, you know, sometimes I think people will take on a little project and it grows and they get scared from doing the next project. But, you know, like you said, like you got to get the right, the right one. Cause if you don't like that color, you're never going to like it when you're coming yes, home. That's true. <laughs> And, you know, my world is in curb and peel. And so we're talking about curb peel all the time in my yeah. world. And I have actually never heard anyone say, so I thought it was really interesting about removing something. Most of the conversations that you see, you know, um, out there are about what to add. So I really liked how you said, you know, remove those elements that don't feel quite right or aren't authentic to your home or the style of your home or, uh, or your personal style. So right. I loved that feedback. Okay, Karen, now let's dig into your new book, Mid-Century Modern Style, An Approachable Guide to Inspired Rooms. It's a beautiful accomplishment. You should be very proud. Thank you. I was curious why, you know, we've talked about your past history. What kind of made you be inspired to write a book? Yeah, I guess it, um, you know, really going back, the blog um, was joyful for both John and I to write. Um, we both wrote for the blog, um, and I've always enjoyed writing. So the book, I guess, was kind of a over time. You know, a lot has changed in my life um, from starting my own business and really, really diving into this space. Um, so when we were when I started the blog and we were doing our starting our home renovation journey, I personally would go out and find like every book I could on Eichler's mid-century modern design, famous um, famous architects in the space. All that historical research was um, really informative for me, but I felt like none of those books were kind of from my like generation. Um, you know, I was looking at a lot of history books, which is great, but then it was like we were in what, 20 2015 at the time and it's just like how does that translate to today like how do we do this now um so the book really has a bit of an idea that's evolved over time on um all that cumulative education that we just did on our own um but also from working with my clients I tend to want to make the home work for that family in that space so it's kind of a combination of all of that and um, I thought it would be neat to put together a book that um, would have been what I would have wanted to buy when I bought my house. I also wanted it to be approachable. I wanted it to be um, ways to just inform readers, you know, whether you know a lot about mid-century modern. Um, this book is definitely for you. We have tons of pretty pictures and tons of inspiration. Um, but also, you know, I have a lot of friends who uh, say, I like mid-century modern, I think, but I don't actually know, like, what what it what makes one thing mid-century versus not like I don't actually know a lot so that this book is also for them absolutely yeah I love the simplicity of it and the organization the structure uh you know a lot of times maybe you're just working on a certain space in your home the kitchen or the bath it's nice you can come flip to that section and just kind of hone in on those uh those items you're interested in I also loved the incredible photography by your co-author Christopher oh. Dibble it really made it like a page turner even if you know you just got it and you would just flip through it the first time the photos are absolutely amazing but I'm sure with simplicity it can also become uh bring in difficulty how did you decide what to include or not to include um yeah I had an amazing editor so thank you Glenny uh she would joke that I would just like she was working through my brain so because I've been doing this for so long you know she I had started writing maybe a third of the book before we actually got the contract to to do the book with the publisher. But then there were just times where it was just like lots of ideas and words and she's, yep. she was, we're going to like break this down. Like Karen's <laughs> brain is very busy right now. So um, thanks to her help, she was able to really like help me structure the book as the final 
was. Christopher Dibble and I shot a lot of the book before we, you know, these, this is just past work that him and I, um, he photographed for me over the years before we did the book. And then um, we, maybe ha the other half of the homes, we photographed exclusively to have for the book. Um, so yeah, it was hard to, we have so many different kinds of houses. Um, I have even more homes that I've been so proud of that I got to work on, but we, like you said, it's like, how do you fit it all into mm -hmm. one book? So yeah, it was yeah. kind of hard to um, whittle down, but with a uh, great team, um, we really tried to just focus on those, as we would call it, guideposts. Like what part is a great example of what it is I'm trying to, um, you know, convey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So will there be another book maybe someday? Sure. Um, I would like, I've got, again, so many other homes that didn't even make it in the book. Um, so many great projects. I don't know. We'll see. It's been fun. And, um, and we're really excited. It'll be out in just a couple of weeks and um, we can't wait to see what everybody thinks and um, share it with everybody. Everyone's going to love it. Our passion here at Modern House Numbers is to help folks bring modern design to their exterior. So, of course, I was really drawn to Chapter 7, which is about exterior or entries and outdoor spaces. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your approach in this chapter. Why is the exterior and specifically the curb appeal so important during an update and a renovation? Yeah, the exterior is... Um that first glimpse of kind of the personality of who lives in the home, that exterior is what you see every day, just for yourself personally, you know, forget what the neighbors think, forget um, visitors coming to your house, but you see your house when you first drive up every day, grocery store, bring to school. And they're just kind of like a feeling you get when you see um, an exterior design. So I think that's why exterior design and curb appeal and landscaping is like, um, it's really important because then this is what you see every day. When we help clients uh, with exterior design, um, again, we're trying to find like, what's the personality? What kind of like feel do you want? Every every homeowner and client is different on what their personality um, either is or like what they want to portray with their kind of home exterior. So we try to hone in on what that feeling might be. You, you know, you talked a lot about, which I love, color, and you talked about your passion about painting and exterior and, you know, the color choices um, for the details are really important to express your personal style or what you, what you want someone to perceive your, your style is driving down the street. Can you talk about, you know, how someone can use color to, when selecting their hardware for their exterior? Sure. Hardware is so fun. Um... There's even things like, it's not even just the color, sometimes it's the finish, right? So uh, are you a polished chrome, kind of like a yeah. little bit of fun bling type of person or matte black? It's um, a little more understated, very modern. And then there's brass, which is really fun. So yeah, finishes. I'm a personal fan of, um, you know, powder coating metals, um, maybe getting an old piece, but powder coating it in a color. It can take something from just kind of like old and used looking to like a really fun pop. And then the same for like outdoor, you know, in some outdoor spaces, you're able to put maybe like a little chair or a bench. That's like another great way to bring some color and finish into a space. It just like shows some kind of welcoming that um, I think those little details are what makes a house go from just like boring to actually reflecting um, who might live on the other side. You know, you know, kind of feeds into my next question. I absolutely love the resource guide that you provided at the end of the book. I think this is a rare feature that you find in any design books. It was such a wonderful surprise and, and we were really honored to be included in the list, by the way. Thank you. But I think too often, you know, and I do this a lot as well, you pick up a book and you get inspired, but you don't have the first idea of where to start, which company to contact or what, what, how to source a product. Can you tell me a little bit more about why you included this section in the book? Again, I think that's what I was lacking as a homeowner myself when I embarked on renovating my house. 
I really wanted it to be a personal thing. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of companies that do a lot of things, but um, you know, one big thing I'm into is like sustainable design, um, recycled materials, uh, family friendly materials and products, um, and then small business owners just like you. So um, I kind of had an internal uh, chart in my head of like who I wanted to put in there. And again, a lot of almost, you know, everybody in the book has either been in one of my clients' homes, in my own home, or, um, you know, friends as well. Just like I wanted to really help support other companies that um, I feel like are a lot like us. We're just, we're all trying to help other homeowners and people um, and provide good services and good products and um, good communication. So yeah, thank you for, I'm glad that you uh, got to see that little surprise. Well, I think it's amazing. So when you get the book, make sure you flip to that section first and then get inspired as you look back through the whole book. Thank you for including us again. A pleasure. Well, it's all organic again. Like, you know, we were, started working together before I even had any idea I'd be running a business doing what I do today. So um, we're so glad we found you and people compliment us on our our exterior and our numbers all the time. So it's all, you know, we love you all. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really love the mid-century color guides that you included. Which finishes or details would you say are most essential to achieving a mid-century look? What's neat is you can like draw from a bunch of them. But again, I think grass is really interesting. Um, for example, like grass and walnut clocks were very true to that period. Like you don't see new contemporary things today that aren't mid-century rooted like in grass and walnut. It's just, you know, like there's still that root. Like it was such a strong mm -hmm. walnut and teak and woods and then like grass and um, even black steel. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just so iconic because they really came to life in new, well, at the time, you know, new design and new furnishings. Um, so it's just such a classic, I don't know, there's a, maybe like a warmth to it. And, and then I'm also personally like a huge fan of polished chrome. Um, mm -hmm. I have polished chrome finishes in my house. Uh, I just think it is it's really timeless. It's, it can be super modern today. You know, it can, you can have a really modern faucet or something um that's not mid-century at all but just a truly modern but in polished chrome it's it's just really beautiful so um I think those are some of my favorite finishes wow our time has really flown by Karen I want to thank you so much for your time and for sharing your ideas and enthusiasm for design with us today I can't wait for everyone to be able to get a copy of your book is there anything you would like to share before we go yeah, well, thank you again for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I'm always excited to talk about mid-century modern design and my crazy enthusiasm for it. So thanks for having me. Um, yeah, my, so my book, uh, Mid-Century Modern Design, comes out on October 3rd. Uh, it's currently available for pre-order. So if you want to make sure you get your copy, you can pre-order it now, and then it'll ship to you um, after October 3rd. It's available on bookshop.org, amazon.com, and barnesandnoble.com. And then we love, love, love supporting local bookstores. So um, you can go to your local bookstore, request to buy a copy through them. After October 3rd, it will be available in several retail stores. We're still kind of waiting to hear who's picked us up, but um, quite a number of stores have picked us up. So we're very excited to see our book like actually out in the world. Uh, and then starting in October, Christopher Dibble, my photographer on the book, uh, will be starting kind of like a mini book tour in the next couple months. Um, we're going to be at the Fall Preview Modernism Week in Palm Springs in October. Um, and then we figured, well, while, while we're down in Palm Springs, like maybe we'll just pass through L.A. too. So if any of you L.A. people want to uh, see us let us know some of your favorite spots and um, maybe we can do a little book signing down in LA 
And then I'm going to be up in Portland um, with Christopher up in December. We're doing a book tour in Portland as well, because that's where he's from. Um, so we're really excited uh, to share the book with everybody um, and share our love of mid-century modern designs. Thank you, Karen. We It's been a lovely conversation and it's been fun getting to know you even more. Mid-Century Modern Style, An Approachable Guide to Inspired Rooms is available for pre-order at bookshop.org, Barnes & Noble Online, Amazon.com, and what we always love is to support our local bookstores. It will be available to ship or purchase in stores after October 3rd.